guys, we spawned right next to a chest tree. Okay, let's see if what's inside this chest. Netherite armor! Oh my god! These are some of the funniest fake speedruns in Minecraft's new 1.19. This first speedrunner spawns right in the village, where if we look closely, we can see a couple missing wood blocks, showing us right off the bat that this world has already been played on. And the runner must have forgot to place these blocks back after a past attempt. Next, they find a chest in a house where it is impossible for chests to spawn. And inside of it, they find a ton of iron that they don't get the achievement for. After looting another house with a ton of iron and strangely no bed, the runner crafts a full set of iron gear, minus a pickaxe. Remember this for later. The runner finds a ruined portal next where the entire surrounding area is on fire thanks to this one block of lava, which again shows us that they have already played on this world, which is really the only way this fire would have enough time to spread this much. The ruined portal's chest has a bunch of insanely impossible loot, which allows the runner plenty of resources to head right into the nether, where they are in quite the predicament. To avoid having to build all the way to solid ground, the runner heads back to the overworld, where they walk a while before building a new portal, which takes them right to, what do you know, a nether fortress. The runner collects blaze rods and eventually heads to a nearby bastion, where there is an insane number of piglets. Because of this, the runner is able to get ender pearls from trading super quickly, and heads back to the overworld, where they locate the stronghold and conveniently mine right to the portal. But eventually, they end up killing themselves in the end with a bed. I'll score this speedrun with a C for com complete your speedrun next time. Next, we're gonna take a look at this dude named Sam is Dead 12. And in this one speedrun of his, the loading screen seems a little suspicious. When you generate a brand new world, this white square appears briefly in a specific location before zapping to the center and continuing to enlarge and change color. The location of the initial appearance of this white square stays the exact same every single time you generate a new world using the same seed. In Sam is Dead's run, the white square spawns in the bottom left. But when I loaded up the seed for the world, which was provided by the runner in the description, I found out that the square is actually supposed to spawn near the middle, showing us that the runner spliced his recording during the world generation process to make it seem like he hadn't already played on this world. But we'll find out soon that that isn't the case. When he loads in, the runner is suspiciously able to immediately run right to a shipwreck, and then right to a village, and then right to a lava pool, which he uses to build a portal. But when he enters the nether, there seems to be a cut in the recording, and and right after it, the runner is conveniently right next to a bastion. Not suspicious at all. The runner loots the bastion and trades with some piglins, where he's able to get pearls pretty quickly. He locates and loots a fortress next, and afterwards builds a portal in a very specific spot that conveniently takes him right to a village, where he's able to gather the beds he needs to fight the dragon. The runner heads to the stronghold next and mines right down into this underwater cave, where he somehow knows the exact direction to head in and is able to mine right into the portal room. The runner proceeds to fight the dragon, and everything seems legit. This run was a bit less obvious, so I think I'll score it with a B for better than the last. You guys have been asking me a ton to show you who the speedrunners are, so this next run comes from a guy named Joe Smith. I'm not joking. This guy starts the speedrun normally by just chopping some trees, but things start to get weird when he heads down into a cave and finds... It's an Enderman dungeon? No way. I didn't even know these things existed. They're so rare. So he now has access to all the ender pearls he could ever need but there's more. In the dungeon's chests are blaze rods, obviously placed by him before the run, and completely eliminating the normal step of having to go to the nether. Ah, there's a carcass, there's a carcass, there's a carcass! It's a zombified carcass! He goes ahead and kills some endermen. I need to kill some more of these, uh, these tall guys. But almost dies because he's clearly not the most skilled player. Cry about it! Cry about it! Even with all the insane items he already cheated for, he feels the need to use commands to give himself even more eyes of Ender. Just for the sake of the speedrun, I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself some Ender eyes. I'm sorry. Ender unknown item. I, you, I, you, I, <laughs> but he doesn't even really need them because he just walks like ten blocks from the dungeon and finds the stronghold. Oh, there it is. There it is. Come on, baby. The end. The end. <laughs> Guys, I did it! Headphones down, it's okay. I can literally buy all the headphones I want. I'm famous now. This next runner is using a third-party Minecraft client, which is not allowed for speedruns. He finds a strange cave right next to his spawn where he's able to jump right down into an ancient city. How convenient. The runner loots the ancient city, which strangely has no shulk shriekers, and heads to the city's portal, which for some reason has obsidian instead of the deep slate it's supposed to spawn with. Huh? And the portal takes him right into a fortress. He grabs blaze
laser rods and eventually finds a pack of Endermen in the fortress, which would technically be possible if the fortress was in a blue forest biome, but these gray particles in the air show us that it's actually in a basalt delta, confirming that these were spawned in by the runner. He heads back to the overworld and builds up to the surface, and begins to locate the stronghold, which is very strangely and very obviously constructed to just be a straight path to the portal. The runner enters the end and almost dies to an enderman, and so in order to save himself, he cuts his recording and all of a sudden has notch apples in his inventory. We can tell that he cut his recording because of the sudden jump in the timer. I'll score this run with a B for but big portal. This next runner, who by the way is using a third party client, starts his run by chopping wood in a village and killing an iron golem, but he strangely doesn't get the achievement for grabbing the iron. A little while later though, he strangely cuts his recording and afterwards has the achievement. What a good way to cover it up. The runner finds a ruined portal next where he only gets one obsidian from the chest, but after heading to a second ruined portal nearby, he all of a sudden has eight that somehow just appeared in his inventory. He heads to the nether next, thanks to this obsidian, where he quickly locates a bastion. But in this room, where there are normally quite a few piglin brutes, there's strangely only one. The runner loots the bastion, and from four chests gets 34 gold blocks, when normally you'd only get about 10. The runner locates and loots a fortress, and then finds a group of piglins to trade with. After completing the trading, the runner has enough pearls for seven eyes of ender. Not quite enough to get to the end, but it's fine. After another random cut in the recording, he has a ton of extra pearls in his inventory, Inventory. Next, the runner locates the stronghold and heads into the end, where he actually, well, dies. And when he returns, the dragon's health is entirely depleted. I'll give this run a D for don't die next time. This next runner spawns in an absolutely insane sea, with one, two, three, four villages, three shipwrecks, and two ruined portals. And when he's looting these, we can actually see in the distance a ruined portal that seems to have already been lit by him. The runner eventually heads into the nether using a different portal, and once he's in, the nearby lava has already flowed all the way down to the ground, which seems suspicious because normally when you enter the nether for the first time, lava takes time to flow down from the roof. He he kills some blazes in a nearby fortress, but leaves with only 5 rods. He heads to a bastion next to trade for enderpearls, where he once again only gets 5, and then heads back to the overworld, locates the stronghold, and heads into the end, where there's something strange going on with the crystals, like this one here that doesn't have a base on it, showing us that it was placed by the speedrunner, as it is impossible for a crystal to naturally spawn without a base. A lot of the pillars also look really short, which also explains the lack of base on the crystals. Not much else happens in this run, so subscribe if you enjoyed.